the middle of the night for me. And I woke up, uh, as I usually do sometimes, with a thought and an idea. Uh, this thought and idea has turned into an observation. And it's on atheism and atheists. It's come to my attention as, as I was looking around and seeing who were the atheists and who were the so-called Christian right uh, that uh, many atheists feel are idi idiots and morons. Um, most of the Christian right seem to come from the country and live on farms. Well, most of the atheists, at least from the ones I've seen, anyways, are primarily city people who have no idea where their food where their food comes from. Food comes from. This got me to thinking. Right, the observation that turns into a thought revolves further. That it reminds me of what my uncles told me would happen back in Greece. Uh, before the 1970s, and this is a little after World War II. Back there, it is the same paradigm. The intellectuals and the smart people are typically the city people and the backwards quote unquote country bumpkins who are primarily significantly more religious than the city people are out in the villages and in uh, up in the hills of Greece, you know, the equivalent to uh, the American hillbillies. Anyways, uh, during this period, there was a lot of fighting, a lot of fighting, including a civil war in Greece, and. It wound up that the food supply for Greece, particularly for the cities, wound up being cut off and it kind of collapsed. The intellectuals, the smart people, the atheists, in the cities all starved to death. Huge numbers of people starved in Greece, and it pushed a whole migration uh, from Greece to here, into Toronto, to Chicago, um, all over the United States and Canada, and also into Australia. When they went back to see how the uh, people were doing in the village because they, these, pe these people were backwards, assumed they were assumed to not be able to feed themselves. The people in the villages, up in these remote mountain villages, these places, places are really high up. They're like like some of the villages in the Andes. Um, were fine. Matter of fact, they were very healthy. They not were they not starving. They were very healthy. And they couldn't figure out these the, the city scientists, the city doctors, and the, the you know the intellectuals couldn't figure out how these people survived. Well, let's just think about this for a minute here. The country bumpkins, the ones who were religious, all were farmers. All were herders and intimately understood how animals and nature work, because that's how they fed themselves. And 
for those intellectuals who really don't really get figure this out, this is where your food comes from. So, but here's where the contradiction really comes in. Darwin, taken from the uh, the atheist intellectual path, states that the highest evolved animals are the ones who survive because it is survival of the fittest. So they assume that the, the most highly evolved, the fittest animals will survive. Well, in a famine situation, in a uh, when the food system collapses, and, and this is what happens sometimes in a modern civilization, uh, after a civil war, after any form of war, there is a catastrophic shortage of food because the entire food distribution system that we normally rely on, that in terms of we're going to the grocery store to get our food, collapses. So while city people, the intellectuals and the atheists, die from starvation, the more religious country idiots who are intimately familiar with how their food com where their food comes from, because they grow it, survive. So who, if it's survival of, of the fittest, as Darwin says, then the fittest who have survived are not the intellectuals, but the country bumpkins and the idiots. I wonder how an atheist would feel about this now.